TB is an infection that people tend to get. It's caused by a germ called Mycobacterium tuberculosis, uh, which is actually quite a cunning germ because it's slow growing and doesn't act like your normal germs and bacterial infections like you get in the winter time. Very slow growing and it has some unique defense mechanisms which can make it difficult to treat, uh, but it is treatable and we can cure people with TB. Around December 2006, I started feeling a little bit of discomfort in the right side of my lungs. Come January, the discomfort started getting more and more. I mean, I was getting sharp pains during the night. First thing next morning, I went to my GP who uh, checked me and said, I want you to go for an x-ray straight away. He sent me to the city hospital. And I said, why would you want to do that? He said, well, there's not enough oxygen in the right side of my lungs. So I went to the hospital, they took an x-ray and uh, they said, we think it is pneumonia. The signs and symptoms of TB will vary depending on where the person has got the TB. The common one would be um, if they have TB in their lungs and it's making them cough. And any sort of cough that lasts more than two or three weeks um, should be investigated anyway. This cough could be a dry, tickly cough or it could be a wet, productive cough. Um, commonly also tuberculosis makes a person uh, have a fever because they've got an infection that their body's trying to get rid of and that fever can really sort of cause some very unpleasant night sweats. They're discussed as drenching night sweats and the patient might wake up in the middle of the night soaked to the skin. Um, the infection also causes the person to lose their appetite and um, stop eating and as a consequence of that they can have a significant amount of weight loss, um, quite a rapid and dramatic amount of weight loss in a short period of time. Um, other signs and symptoms might be things like they might notice an enlarged lymph node for example in their neck or in the top part of their body um, and present to their doctor with just a lump that they felt. Uh, they might not have then a cough or have had any fever. They kept me, you know, up with the appointments going to the city hospital to see the respiratory clinic. And just by chance, one day a consultant said, this was, this went on for two, three months. And in May, a consultant said, well, I'm going to inject you on your arm, just superfluous in, in, injection. And we wait for a reaction for 48 hours. I want you to come back after two days. And of course, uh, in two days, there was a big reaction on my arm and he said you know I've got to inform you that you have got TB. Anybody can get TB. It's spread from person to person. Uh, normally people who have TB that's in, uh, affected their lungs tend to be symptomatic, they tend to cough and if they're coughing out the, the germ, the bug, other people can catch it. But actually it's not that easy to catch. Uh, a lot of people think catching TB, that it's highly contagious, that it's very infectious, uh, like flu or anything like that. But actually, it's fairly difficult to pass on to other people. If you have infectious TB of the lungs, you need to be coughing, uh, your, uh, coughing quite uh, severely. And uh, for somebody else to get it, they actually need to be in very close, prolonged contact with somebody who's coughing a lot which is why we tend to see most people who develop TB are those who have very close contact with people, such as people living in the same house or having very close working relationships with someone who's got TB. It's not as infectious as flu or other things uh, that people are quite used to. The two main types of TB are what we uh, refer to as active TB or latent TB. Now, latent TB is a form of TB where the TB is essentially, it's asleep, it's dormant. It's lying in the body encased in a protective coating and is not causing any problems. And it may later wake up and start to grow and cause problems uh, and become infectious after that. Um, and the second type of uh, TB is the TB which is active, where the body hasn't cleared the TB infection and the TB is actively growing slowly but still growing and causing problems uh, and affecting parts of the body and that TB is the type of TB which is infectious and can be passed on from person to person. 
TB can be diagnosed in different ways. It really does depend on the presentation of the patient. If the patient presents to the GP with a history of a prolonged cough and is producing sputum from that cough, then ideally sputum is collected and tested for TB. Other ways of diagnosing the TB are by listening to the patient and taking a clear history. Sometimes we know that somebody's actually had prolonged contact with either a household or a close family member and therefore TB would be something that you would want to consider and rule out. But an awful lot of the time we have no idea where somebody's caught TB from. So we listen to what they're describing and the sort of symptoms that they're having and put pieces of the jigsaw together. A chest x-ray is a, is a very common and useful way of diagnosing TB and um, this can pick up infection that's in the lung and obviously in the part of the body around the lung. Other tests that we can use are the tuberculin skin test, which we also call a MAN2 test. And um, a lot of people have heard of that test because it was the same one used prior to having a BCG vaccination. And it's a simple skin test that's done on the forearm. And more recently, we have access to a interferon gamma blood test, which is taken as a blood sample and can be used to um, specifically identify if tuberculin is present in the body or not. We tend to find that there's a high rate of TB in uh, ethnic communities for a variety of reasons. One of the main reasons is because of the travel links that people in the ethnic communities have with their home countries, whether it's in South Asia, whether it's in sub-Saharan Africa, East Africa or uh, the Far East, uh, we, these are places where TB is more endemic. There is more TB in these countries and so the likelihood of people developing TB who are exposed in these areas is much higher. And if we have established travel links with people in these countries, whether it's family members coming over to visit here or people from here going to visit there, there is more exposure to TB. And that's one of the reasons why TB is more common in ethnic minority communities. TB is a bug, uh, a germ, and it doesn't in itself differentiate between different ethnic groups. Awareness of TB must be much more wider, particularly in a city like Wolverhampton. We have a, a very mixed community for different faith groups, different nationalities, people travel abroad. And like we learned today, TB can come to travel. I think events like this are very important to raise community awareness, to, to spread some basic information about conditions like tuberculosis which affect the community and to ensure that people know the minimum that is required for them to be able to take responsibility for their own health and to do all the right things. Without that information, it will never happen. TB is imminently treatable. It's a very, very treatable disease. So the Somali community needs to understand the signs and symptoms to know it's treatable and to know it's a disease that doesn't need to be um, hidden or to be ashamed of. It's nice to say that TB is curable. It's a mycobacterial infection that we have antibiotics for to treat. However, like any antibiotic treatment, it is essential that the course is completed and that medications are not missed. It's quite a lot of medication to take for six months, but it's imperative patients are supported and encouraged and understand that they need to take their medication every single day until the last pill is swallowed. Otherwise, more harm than good can actually occur. But yes, TB is treatable. Creating awareness about TB is very important because it is a disease that is quite well known in the community but is associated with a lot of issues and stigma and false perceptions around TB. Hence, it is important for people to realize it is an infection. It is passed on from person to person. It's not something that we should try to cover up. We need to be able to diagnose it. People need to be aware of the signs and symptoms so that they can see the family doctor straight away whenever they suspect that they are ill. The sooner they see the family doctor, the sooner it can be diagnosed. The sooner it can be diagnosed, the sooner they can be started treatment. Mm -hmm.